Welcome to Caravan of Garbage, everybody. But I do want to apologise to all the Spider-Man 3 apologists out there. I apologise that they like this crap movie. Oh, got you em. got him! You got him! I got him! It's not that bad. It's pretty bad. <laughs> it's pretty bad. But on, upon rewatch, there are some bright spots in this one. I watched it when it came out at cinemas, and yeah. I haven't seen it since. And look, if any point during this video people could leave a like, that would help out greatly. Would it not? Absolutely! I realised during this that I hate Peter Parker's happiness in these movies. I think he's more insufferable happy that he is miserable. Yeah, that's probably true, actually, When he's yeah. miming along to Mary Jane, yeah. and, and he's just like, and he's talking about how great it is to be Spider-Man, and, and people that cheering and chanting his name <laughs> or whatever. And I know the point of it is that he's not hearing Mary Jane and her problems. Yeah, right. But uh -huh. it's like, this guy is just unbearable. Why did he think that doing the upside-down kiss in front of Mary Jane with a woman who's not his girlfriend that, would, he's, would that he play. barely knows. Yeah. Also, that's half your face in the daylight with mm. cameras. Yep. There's a lot of information that can be gleamed from people taking a photo of you. That's so true. They yeah. know you be man. They know you be white. <laughs> mm -hmm. They got your dental records. From Gwen Stacy's mouth. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, I forgot I forgot Bryce Dallas Howard was in this. That's right. And you know what? This movie is so long. Yeah. It's so long. Two hours 18, something like that. I kept forgetting that various characters were in the movie. <laughs> Every 20 minutes, a character would show up and I'd go, oh yeah, Sandman's in this. I forgot his entire plot line was in this movie. He is the standout villain from this movie. Yeah. Flint Marco, though. Yes. Flint Marco makes like the Marco, Mar no, like no. the Marco shark. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. But there's a lot of things I like about that character. I think it's a good performance. The look is good. You like his t-shirt. I love his t-shirt. You like a t-shirt tucked into a nice pair of slacks. You no, know I do. The sand effects are incredible. You know, they're really good. Yeah, I'd well, forgotten. It took him three years to develop that technology to make that formation mm. kind of happen. You know, when, when he mm. rebuilds himself and you feel yeah. the emotion with his daughter. All of that is good. His theme tune. It's it's great. Mr. Sandman. <laughs> Send me a man bom, 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 bom. <laughs> Bring me the sandiest man that you can Oh, there he is But when you see, yeah, when you see the Like the, maybe the, the close of his hand You see all the granules Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. hadn't been done before oh. Not like that I mean, sure, we'd seen big sand faces in The Mummy Yep, that's right. But this is the next level sand face. Mm, that's yeah. right. Uh, you mentioned the music, though, because the score of this isn't Danny Elfman because he had a miserable experience working with Sam Raimi on number two. So he quit. He's like, oh. we're not friends and I'm not coming back. So they got Christopher Young to do it. And I think he does a good job. That, I couldn't tell, certainly. There you go. But I, I, apparently they did end up collaborating, though. Like, he did come back and... Uh, for a little bit to kind of kind of help out. The Sandman uh, fight scenes are some of the best. When he's robbing the truck and yep. he sweeps his legs out and he turns to sand, he punches through yeah. it. They actually used an amputee in a Spider-Man suit to get that uh, get that effect so they could do it like on, on set so it looks like he's he's got his arm right through him. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. that's, there's some good stuff oh, there. There you go. Yeah, and he also, uh, there was a moment where Sandman punches a brick, like a brick wall, and Thomas Hayden Church punched a real brick in that because they told him they swapped it out. They're like, yeah, that's a fake brick, and he hit it, and they went, oh, we actually, we forgot to swap that out, and he's like, yeah, fucking no. I just broke my hand. There seems to be a theme emerging sure. amongst the crew members of the Spider-Man movies, which is they're violent thugs, yeah. and they want to hurt the cast of yeah, these movies. Absolutely. But yeah, a lot of the a lot of the action sequences in this are surprisingly good. The opening uh, the opening sequence, mm. which is Peter Parker versus New Goblin, yeah. is actually really good, I think. And I think it would be great if it was a villain we cared about on any level, or a recognisable villain. If that were the Hobgoblin... Well, it is a recognisable villain from this series. Yes, for sure. It's Harry Osborn, yeah. But the costume, really... It's nothing. <laughs> it's it's uh, absolutely nothing. Yeah. Was Tony Hawk and snowboarding big <laughs> at this point in time? It must have been, yeah. I guess so, but, like, the mask is nothing. I didn't even recall that it was a snow, like a flying snowboard. I thought it was a goblin glider up until I, the rewatch. Oh, right, like, okay. Oh, that's a snowboard, yeah. See, I think there are moments in that that look really good, for example, when he's trying to catch the ring out of midair. And he yep. shoots the web, and it's really Tobey Maguire moving past the camera. But there's a lot of CGI faces and men just tumbling over each <laughs> other. A lot of that in this movie, I feel like there's less sets and more, and you mentioned this on Spider-Man 2, that we can kind of CGI anything now, but this movie really leads into that. There's a mm. lot of, we're fighting in a nothing space, you know, like that underground train tunnel that's just it's just tunnels up on tunnels and bridges and whatever. Uh -huh. And the bit where the, where New Goblin, our favourite <laughs> our favorite new villain, is going through between there's the... So <laughs> many, there's so many villains you could have made him into. You didn't have to make him the Hobgoblin or the Green Goblin again. Anything. Apparently one of the masks you go past is supposed to be like a Hobgoblin reference. 
because huh. there's like a clear kind of perspexy, and I guess there's a bit of orange in it, but I didn't get that <laughs> right, at no. all. But you know, the bit where he's going between the buildings, it just looks like he's standing nowhere. That's just true, kind of yeah. ducking and uh-huh. weaving it <laughs> yeah, right. d- d- back uh-huh. and forth. Well, but... I found it thrilling nonetheless. I think maybe it's because my expectations were so low for this one. I'm like, it's yeah. actually not bad. Not bad, not a bad opening. Yeah, okay. Mm. Did you like the bit though, and I know I did, where he gets clotheslined and just hits the ground so fucking hard. Yeah. Like he really hits... He hits yeah. the wall and the bin and the ground or whatever. Yeah. It's great. And this, I think that is the biggest illustration that this it's a cartoony, stylized Spider-Man movie. Because first of all, he doesn't die immediately. No. Powers or no powers, but also he gets amnesia. <laughs> Absolutely he does. I love how Peter Parker's like, oh, he's, he's got amnesia. It's fine now. Yeah. We'll just hang out and play basketball. And we'll all make omelets together. What should I do with the millions of dollars worth of dangerous military technology <laughs> he has in his house? Just leave it there? <laughs> sure. Why not? What are the odds he'll get his memory back and go and retrieve those and try and kill me again. That performance is so weird, James Franco, in yep. this movie. The bit where they're sitting together in the in the diner, and you know he throws in the wink when he's out the window, and he's oh, eating yeah, the that's pie. Yeah, that's right. It's just it's yeah. so. And he's got that weird like dead eye. Also, did he finish the pie? No, I think he took it to go. I was gonna say, yeah. In that in that nanosecond while the bus goes past, <laughs> he's right. like, "Quick, can you take this to go? Here's, here's your tip, okay?" <laughs> I love though when he finally figures out who he is and what he is and whatever. Mm-hmm. He threatens Mary Jane and's like, "You better tell Peter Parker to you bloody break up with him." in a second she's like sure no worries she's not like didn't he knock you out and didn't he kill your dad and also beat up the octopus man like he (laughs) he could probably (laughs) when it came down to it he could probably sort you out again which he does yeah Yeah, he absolutely (laughs) does yeah like it's one of those situations where if everybody kind of just talks openly about it like if they met on the bridge and she was like Hey, heads up, he's over there and he threatened to, to kill me and kill you. As far as I know, he doesn't have super hearing, so we can really say anything we want. I mean, just act sad for a minute. I'm not actually breaking up with you. I'm just, just pretend I am and make a sad face. You're very good at your sad faces, Absolutely. Peter. You're doing one right now, regardless of what I'm saying. So just keep doing that. Then we'll pretend we're broken up. And then anyway, I'm going to be at the coffee shop with him later. Just clothesline him again. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, there's a, there's a third villain in this Spider-Man 3, because why wouldn't you have to put one on you? Uh, that is Venom. To me, the most disappointing villain from this, because New Goblin, who cares? Sandman, I'm not, I wasn't really a fan uh-huh. at the time. You weren't a Sand fan. I was, exactly. A few months after we got the initial story, the idea came about, let's introduce the symbiote. Let's introduce the black suit. And of course, that means only one thing. Let's introduce Venom. So I heard when he was being put into the movie, I'm like, great, because I really want to see Venom on the big screen. Topher, great. Yeah. First off on that, you just said then, it's bad casting. The frosted tips, uh-huh. he's, he's too small. <laughs> like he put on like 24 pounds of muscle to play the role and he quit that 70 show to make it happen. Like the moment when he rolls up when there's the big crane accident, which uh-huh. I think looks quite good because that's one of the, you know, it's a practical set that kind of drops and uh-huh, things sure. slide across and whatever. And he's like, oh, that's your daughter hanging there. That's Gwen. Oh, by the way, I'm dating your daughter. It's not the, it's not the time. Like, what are you... Yeah, read the room, what mate. What are you doing? Yeah. yeah. Right. That's the farmer from Babe and probably Babe 2 Pig in the City. Probably, yeah. yeah. Like the look of it's fine, I guess, because it's, it's Venom isn't it? And he's meant to be like the douchebag version of Peter Parker, I guess. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, we were all fans of Venom back in the in the 90s and 2000s. Sure. I wanted Eddie Brock to be this hulking mass of a man. Like yeah. he's, he's got to appear to be physically like, like he could bully yeah. Peter Parker, you know? You're talking out of the costume, right? Yeah, yeah. out of the costume, yeah. yeah. And like the idea, you know, one of the, the elements of the symbiote costume is that it enhances your own strength or it enhances what you already have. And yeah. Like, because Eddie Brock's supposed to be this kind of, like, quite strong bodybuilder, that adds on to the Spider-Man strength and the symbiote strength to make him physically larger and more imposing yeah. than Spider-Man. But the version we get, he's he's the same size. Yeah, it's exactly, not, yeah. You know? I mean, the, the the Tom Hardy Venom movie got a lot of stuff wrong, but at least size-wise. At least he got in that lobster tank. Exactly, that's right. What else right. do you want? Yeah, yeah. nothing. It was the improv on set. They didn't even know they were going to do it, but he got in that lobster tank and then they're like, bring in some real lobsters and they're like, is this a good movie? And they're like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter, does it? What I don't also like about this character is he just comes from nowhere. I'm talking about the symbiote. Symbiote, whatever. Mm. It just drops out of the sky. There's no explanation. It's not like it's drawn to Peter Parker. Like, it is. Yep. Maybe that's why it landed there. But where did it come from? Where did it come know. from? Yeah, right? Yeah, and I don't need an origin for everything, but it could have easily been the version that was created in a lab. But also one early version of what was going to be, and we mocked this character in the last movie. John Jameson? John Jameson was going to bring it back from space. Perfect. Would have worked. And I guess if they'd laid the groundwork for that in Spider-Man 2, like in a, you know, final scene, 
mean, we'd be like, oh yeah, that's pretty, okay, that makes yeah. a lot of sense. That's some good foreshadowing. But I guess uh, Sam Raimi had no intention of putting Venom in Spider-Man yeah. 3, so there wouldn't have been anything like that, right? Yeah, exactly. Do we know why he was so adamant against putting I, Venom in this? I think it just wasn't a character that he enjoyed or, or related to. Right. And I, I think that's very evident in the way that they deal with him in the end, because he explodes. Sure. And you see his skeleton. Yep, you so absolutely both, do. both the symbiote and Eddie Brock, gone. So dead. Yeah. Like, some of the villains, you're like, well, you know, there's still a body and whatever, and maybe the Green Goblin, he's a hallucination, he's coming back, and the Sandman blows off in the breeze, and Dr. Octopus, he drowns, but the arms could probably swim themselves away, but this guy's like, no, he, he was atomized. Yeah, that's there's right. There's nothing uh-huh. left of this guy. Yeah. Uh, but apparently, though, that intro with... John Jameson was to save time and money to bring him back from space, but just be like, look what we found in space. Like, you don't need to show him getting it and bringing it back no, down. No, absolutely and- <laughs> not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because, again, this, this universe is kind of a closed universe. It's just Earth, and it's just what happens pretty much in New York. Yeah. And just to bring something out of space for no reason. Yeah, it doesn't match the other, the, no, the, kind really of the tone and the other characters that have been brought in yeah, mm. at all. Uh, early drafts for this movie though included uh, the Lizard, who Dylan Baker plays, you know, mm-hmm. he turns up again from 2, and Electro, and before Venom it was Vulture, so that's kind of the, the road that they, were, they kind of took to get here. But of course, Mason, there's a, there's a fourth villain in this movie, emo Peter Parker who oh, shows up. Oh, that's right. It's weird and embarrassing, mm. and it looks ridiculous, he looks ridiculous. And I guess, I guess the justification is that mm. this is what a a real nerdy loser yeah. would, would 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 imagine think. being a cool yeah. guy was like. This is apparently set one year after two, and two is set two years after one. So it's, it's technically 2021 ish. All right, okay. You can buy sure. that, right? Yeah, I can, you, you can see it. Absolutely. I, I, mean, can, I can tell from his youthful fringe. That's my favourite move, I think, in the whole movie, is when he, he decides to be evil and he just fringes his hair yeah. down. He just pushes it down and goes, yeah, that's what evil cool this guys do. This is what do. I'm doing. Yeah. And the dance sequence is embarrassing. It's also weird how some of the women are like, oh, hello, and some of the women are like, yuck. So that's why I'm like, is this supposed to be cool or not cool? Yeah, I can't mystery, really tell what, you, mm. what you're going for mm. here. And it doesn't work. And his cool guy clothes are about as cool as his regular clothes. They really are. They're just slightly darker. The eyeliner and the, the, the flat hair. Like, like, Has he always known how to play piano? Has he just lacked the confidence That's a really good question. Piano. Yeah, and then he punches Mary Jane in the face. Mm. So that's really good, isn't it? I disagree. Yeah. Well done, everyone. This whole <laughs> sequence is really, really good. And well thought out. Mm, yeah. But jazz, you know? But jazz. It's all about the girlfriends you don't punch. You can take that <laughs> out. <laughs> of course, Bruce Campbell returns as a French waiter. Uh, it's got my favourite line in it where he just says, Romance. Romance. I am French. And then there's a pause. <laughs> He's not French. What, Bruce Campbell isn't French? No, I just mean this. They were always going to do Quentin Beck, right? Because he's clearly not French in this movie. I don't think they. I look. I don't. I don't buy that. They were rolling it into four. There are storyboards that he that he was going to for part four that he was going to be mysterious. I'm aware of that, but I feel as as we know, Sam Raimi puts Bruce Campbell into all his movies, regardless. He's he's right at the end of Darkman. He's the last mask in Darkman. I know. I know the prevailing fan theory is that all his appearances in the first three Spider Man movies, it's Quentin Beck. But I think the storyboard of him being led away, it's just it's the start of four. And he's just defeated a terrible, lame, bad guy in the form of Mysterio. Mm, I'd love to know what people think. Me too. Me also. Tobey Maguire didn't work out for this movie. I was keeping a close eye on him. I'm like, what's going on here? Oh, he yeah. got ripped for one. We saw his shirtless two. Yeah. We get a little bit of a peek. Yeah. In front of this the window. one, Spider-Man 3, he blade three it. Yeah, he blade three it. Which is fine. Yeah. Because he still looks good. But the, the moment where he's tearing off the symbiote... And oh, you yeah. see the back of him, it's just some other dude. Right. Like that, the back of his head, that's not, that's not him. Which is fine, man. I mean, I, th- doing that is, is super difficult. But yeah, I just, I just think that's important that I let people know that I realise that. Sure. Okay, good. <laughs> Did you know there is an alternate uh, editor's edition of this movie? Really? Yeah. It wasn't done by Topher Grace, was it? I know he does, he does he does his own edits of he things. He does it. Right? He does a he does a Star Wars prequels, he mashes them all together, exactly. I don't believe so. This was released officially uh, a few years back. One of the moments 
I mentioned it earlier, where uh, the the butler, who's like actually Bill Paxton's dad. Huh. There you go. That dude's way too old to be a butler, by the way. Like he's like eighty seven years old. Like he shouldn't <laughs> be buttering. Yeah. The the family should have been like, you could have retired twenty years ago. Don't make this guy work. Yeah, that's what exactly are you doing? right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'd think if if were, if you were a nice rich family, you'd be like, we'll we'll call you if you need. In, you know, just just be in the in the guest house. Yeah. But Harry Osborne's like, get some food. We've got guests. Lay out a meat platter. <laughs> Whatever your name is, I don't even know. <laughs> so in the alternate cut, yes. he actually picks up a photo of his friends, like him and Mary Jane and Peter. And Harry like, Osborne does. Yeah, and he's uh-huh. like, oh, that's right, we're all mates, and I'm going to go help in the, in the bloody Sandman fight and the Venom fight at the end, which makes more sense to me. Not a guy being like, you know, the Goblin Glider was your bloody, your, your bloody dad killed himself or whatever. And, his balls. and the other idea was that the butler was going to be another illusion of Harry representing his good side. So his father was the bad side and the butler wasn't real. So that means that when he went, butler, we've got guests, put some food out. He would have spent the rest of the scene going, butler didn't put any food out. You're fired. The blade that pierced his body came from your glider. No, his glider. The blade that pierced his body came from his trailer. Another one is the shot of Peter looking cautiously at the box that holds his black suit. The Christopher Yang score is added to more scenes. There's a moment when uh, Sandman visits his daughter and is a sand castle. And she's like, I forgot the Sandman was in this. Yeah, he's in it, Mason. Yeah, right. He's in the movie. And they cut that very long May Parker scene. It's a no good scene, and I'm glad that we I cut understand, it. sure. Uh-huh. It's a beautiful day, and he said, Let's swim to the island. Shut up! You know how this movie's all about some recycled ideas, including the bit where Mary Jane is, is kidnapped again or whatever. She's re- oh my god, she's kidnapped so many times in this in, yeah. the, in this series. Yeah. What's going on there? Well, apparently they just recycled her screams from part two as well. Incredible. Like, whatever. It's, yeah, right. People aren't going to notice, and we didn't clearly. No, and I imagine there's a you know once you reach a certain level of stardom, there's a there's an element in your contract that just says. She's not going to scream anymore. You don't scream for nobody. Yeah, exactly. You get to the third in a threequel. Ugh, don't no, even worry no about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This was actually changed during shooting because Bryce Dallas Howard was going to be the one who was kidnapped and Mary Jane goes to Harry and goes, go and save Bryce Dallas Howard and, and help Spider-Man. And he's like, all right, then I will. And Kirsten Dunst, she wasn't happy about that. And Sam Raimi like apologized to her. He's like, I'm so sorry, but this is the way this movie's going. So did Kirsten Dunst want to be kidnapped? No, she did not want to be say, kidnapped. Yeah. I was going to say, she would. it would surprise me if she kicked the door in one day on the director's office and was yeah. like, what, I'm not getting kidnapped? Up in this one, this is a disgrace. <laughs> what am I even here for? Mm. You're recycling my screams. Are you kidding me? Aye, there's a fresh one for you. <laughs> that one's for free. The next one will cost you. I like the final battle in the construction site for the yep, most uh-huh. part. The British reporter is terrible. It's hard to believe what's happening, the brutality of it. I, I don't know how we can take any more. I do like the return of New Goblin, though. Who wouldn't? <laughs> it's, your, it's everyone's favourite character, New Goblin. But the, the bomb in the ear, I think that's a good kind of arrival point. For sure, and yeah. It, and it blows out the side of his head and he's like breathing kind of fire and smoke, like uh-huh. coughing it up. Yeah. I think it's quite good. And then he's impaled like his dumb dad. So. Sure, yeah. <laughs> oh, I've been impaled. Like your dumb dad. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Sandman has a good ending, though. I mean, he does. I mean, he he did brutalise a lot of people. Yeah. He beat up all those cops uh, earlier yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. For his daughter or whatever. Yeah, but I think, sure. you know, Peter comes to the realisation that he's living with hate in his heart. Oh, and, and he killed his uncle. He killed his <laughs> uncle. I was going to ask you about that retcon. I know, I know you're not really a fan. Did this change anything for you? No, I still hate it. It being the original guy... When Peter gets him, it kind of closes the book on that. Yeah. And then he's doing what he's doing, not out of some sort of vengeance or whatever. He's doing it because it's the right thing to do. Mm. And I feel like leaving the guy out who murdered your uncle just out in the world, it's no good. Yeah, fair enough. I did like the moment where he's explaining to him that he's like, look, your uncle said, you know, why don't why don't you just put the gun down and just walk away? And he's like, look, I realise that, you know, he was just trying to help me or whatever. I thought, I think that's genuinely a good moment. Yeah, for sure. And then he kind of gets his redemption and he, and he blows away in the breeze. The only villain from this series to survive definitively. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. So I, I quite like that. Anyway, everyone just cries at each other and then it's the end. Uh, it's, <laughs> look, it's, it's a mixed bag to be sure. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, not as bad as I remember it being. Mm. But again, I, I think at the time expectations were high. Yeah. It was an era where there wasn't going to be another superhero movie the next month 
<laughs> yeah, sure, so, yeah. you know, you know, the superhero movies were hitting the mainstream, but you still had to convince people like, no, these these can be good kind of thing. And yeah. uh, Rise of the Silver Surfer, don't even worry about it. It's, it's going to be, be it's incredible. Massive, they're putting in the Fantastic Car. Yes, so, that's right. Uh, Sam Raimi, though, was deeply unhappy with how this uh, movie turned out. I tried to make it work, but um, didn't really believe in all the characters. And you If you could go back and do it over again, would you do it over again? I wouldn't make that movie. Yeah. And if I had a different story with characters that I cared about, that I thought was engaging and true to the Spider-Man universe, yes in a second I love Spider-Man so that was never the issue just that I made the wrong story the wrong way that's I mean that's everything uh, he hoped to make the fourth film. That, mm. that was the plan, and he was going to make up for it in in doing that. We talked about the storyboards, how you know it was all fleshed out. It was pretty much ready to go. They were talking about as late as like 2011, huh. and he was having meetings with Sony, and they kept going like, "Are you sure you want to come back? Because you know maybe you want to move on, maybe you want to do something else." And he was like, "Do you want me back?" <laughs> and they kind of came to this realization that, well, he came to the realization that maybe they didn't, and they wanted to to do the reboot. But yeah, he also said that this movie just raises the stakes, but. To what end? Like, because yeah. it doesn't serve the characters. It just kind of goes bigger. And longer. And longer. Yeah. yeah. I want them to make a fourth one, genuinely. Them to give it back to Raimi. Make a movie set within this universe. I mean, who knows where Venom's set? They've got Spider-Verse. They've got the MCU version. They You're did right. the Garfield version. I think you could continue this. I think it's been long enough that you could cycle back around to this. And I think it would do very well. Tobey Maguire's yeah. back? Bring oh. everybody back. Okay. Just do another one. I right. think the same thing with the Keaton Batman. I'm not saying scrap the new Batman. I'm not saying scrap the new yeah, Spider-Man. Right. I'm saying we're in an era now where people understand that there are different superheroes in different yeah, universes. Right. Uh-huh. What if they teased it in uh, Spider-Verse 2 and then ga- gauged that popularity? Yeah, I'd take that. Yeah, okay, I'd probably see another yeah. one. So, it, so it'd be set now. Yes. Okay, right. Maybe that's a fool's dream, but I think with all this multiverse stuff happening yeah. and you know there is call for a live-action Spider-Verse movie, then... Maybe that's the way to go. What if it's a YouTube short? No. Like, fuck off. The Punisher Dirty Laundry. Actually, I like that one. That's the the only good one. Yeah, right. Uh (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Anyway, this has been Caravan of Garbage for Spider Man 1, 2, and 3. We will come back and do Spider Man 4 when it's finally released. Absolutely, we will. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be doing the Andrew Garfield versions probably the next time a Spider Man movie rolls around. I think I need a bit of a break from these Spider Man movies for a while. Would you watch an amazing Spider Man 3? No. That one I wouldn't. What about all all the stuff in the basement? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of shit in that there's basement, of, isn't there? There's a lot of backpacks in that basement filled with cool guns and Look, stuff. Look, I'll take a YouTube short where they just go, yeah, the basement was flooded. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> We lost it all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, look, if you've got a suggestion for Caravan of Garbage, bloody, we'll take a look. What do you Absolutely. want to see? And what do you think of the Raimi trilogy in general? Are these good? Do these hold up? Having given them a bit of a breather and coming back, yep. I kind of have a newfound respect for them. Me too. I yeah. was pleasantly surprised. I mm. think if you if you, if you you realise they're nowhere close to being even set anywhere near the real world, mm. they're, they're set in a very comic booky, very stylized At a very specific of, time in yeah, movie history. Very kind of four-colour superhero comic book world. Mm. I think they work really well. So. Yeah, I, mean, I this one less so. <laughs> sure, <laughs> but you know, you know, you know what's I up. I know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. We of course have our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. We recently did an episode on the new Spider-Man movie, Far From Home. Mm. I'll link that below if you want to check it out. Thanks, everybody. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. And now it's time for us, as we did at the end of every one of these videos, is to sing the pop rock song that was released with this movie. Was there one, really? It, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. the Dashboard Confessional again? No, it was probably whatever the fuck Jared Leto's dumb fucking band oh, was. 30 Seconds to Mars. I don't think it was them. But it's probably <laughs> something like, Hope's got you by the webs. <laughs> what are you going to do? Can't escape. Put your fringe down. Sandman, he's here. Oh, no. It's Venom too. Is that it? Yeah, that was absolutely it.